Every altar must have a human attendant. The shelf life of the altar is going to be determined by the commitment of the human attendant in his de dedication to the altar. I need to ask you a few questions. What is constant in your life? What is permanent? What must be in your life? You must go to work. Huh? Then your job is your altar. If that's the only constant thing that is in your life, you, I, when I wake up on Monday morning, I must go to work. Your life is going to be shaped by your work. Men of the spirit determine what shapes their life. They don't allow circumstances to shape their life. I was in the oil industry, very technical field in my country. Oil industry accounts for 98% of the gross domestic product of my nation. Only the best of the best can be employed into that industry. We used to go offshore, to walk offshore, way beyond the land, to fiscalize. It's the data we make available that the government uses to formulate policies. We were literally the neck bone of the nation. My job was mentally tasking as it was physically tasking, but I was fasting and doing my job fasting for years. I must do my eight hour prayer every day, even though I was working in the oil industry. Eight hours in tongues. Because if I don't do that, it is the oil industry that will shape my life. And let, let me give you an idea of how it shapes your life. You know, you are paid much more. And the salary system scale we use in our country is performance driven. So we are responsible for 98% of the income. So our salaries are big. So if you allow the oil industry to shape you, ah, because as you are coming, it's easy for you to get any lady you want, white or black. You have enough money to pay. Oh, you just say, oh, I have arrived. And the oil industry will shape you. In 15 years, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you will not recognize yourself. Be a strange creature. I had to pay the price to allow my altar shape my life. Yes, it did. I was not praying because I needed money. I had lots of money, loads of money. I could walk into a cat shop every month when my salary is paid and buy a cat. My house rent for the year, I could pay it with half of my salary in one month. For the year. Yes. I could pay it. I was not poor. But I fasted as if I was an HIV victim. Yes, because your life must be shaped by something. Our fathers were shaped by the altars that they built. So, I was doing my eight hours every day. And you know what? They were walking on the road. So when you hop into the bus, it will take you four hours to go to work. So I'm sure of four hours of tongues. It will take you four hours to get back home. So I was sure of my eight hours. I did that for seven years. Because God said, I should not buy a car for seven years. I used buses for seven years. And the blessing I got from the buses is four hours of prayer, four hours of prayer to come back home. And I maintained it for seven years. You don't even have the ability to throw your phone away. In spirit, will, you will crawl in your sleep and... <laughs> it takes discipline to attend to an altar. It takes your will, not... You not even feel that God is there. Sometimes Satan will come and make the place dry, uncomfortable. He won't balance you, make you emotionally stable. All of that will not stop me from kindling the fire. It doesn't matter how I feel. He didn't say feel, he said pray. You've been feeling things. You felt COVID, feel, you. oh my God, I pray. Yes. You have to tend the altar. It's difficult, but you will use your will to tend it. When you are starting, you may need to designate a place in your house in, just to help your discipline. You need to designate a place in your house and a time where you must come. Sometimes you come there, you don't even feel like praying. 
then you overcome feelings to know that God is not a feeling. God is a God of covenant. And his word is his bond. As long as you are navigating by his word, you will have the results that he has promised you. There must be a human attendant. When you find a nation going a certain way, okay, let me, let's take a scripture. Have you been able to turn your heart? I'm not talking about preaching to people because you can be preaching and there's no altar. We are giving debt. You are darkening counsel. If someone has an encounter with God and sits under your teaching, the teaching will kill that encounter because you were preaching and talking without any spark from an altar. It's like a disease. It's an epidemic that you are releasing. Eight hours on that road. Every day. For some time, for about two years, you don't feel as if God is around. That doesn't bother me. It is the word of God I'm obeying, not my feeling. Satan became tired of giving me those kind of feelings. He just said, This guy is crazy. This guy is terrible. You will linger on that altar for a long time before you see appearances. Yes. This is where Christianity becomes a marathon and not a sprint. Yeah. You need to attend. You need to do it every day. Attend to the altar. Attend to the altar. Attend to the altar. But when you leave this place, you go back and say, okay, I dedicate this room. This will be my place of strength. And when the world beats on me and squeezes me and fights with me, when if I can make it to this place, I will rise with the strength that is needed for me to go back and finish the contention. And the enemy doesn't have the opportunity to glory on my case because when he thinks I am out, as long as I come here, I will return with the strength he never knew I had. The strength of our forefathers in the days of old was drawn from their commitment to the altar. God spoke to Abraham and said, I am going to give you and your seed this land that you are standing on. And the Bible said, Abraham built an altar, not unto any deity, but he built an altar unto the Lord who appeared to him. You know what he was trying to do? He wanted to trap that reality down and make it impossible for God to forget what he has said so that God will bring it to pass. These men had no Bible. Hmm. So they lived by tents and altars. Today we have a Bible, but your Bible is the reason why you don't have an altar. He built an altar to the God that appeared unto him. Through that altar, he was able to trap that promise from God in such a way that it was impossible for God not to fulfill it. So if you know what I'm teaching here, if God speaks to you and gives you a promise, that is when you take a fast. Because God spoke. If you don't know this, <laughs> you were not discipled properly. Many things that God wants to do in your life may not come to pass in your lifetime. God may need to, to look for your children to accomplish it. He built an altar unto the Lord that appeared unto him. He set up an embassy and began to negotiate with God. You have the right of way to come into my space. It is only your hand I want to see in my arena bringing this counsel that you have spoken to pass in my life. At this time, he did not even know the name of the Lord he was dealing with. So you will know that even before he met the Lord, he was not a novice to priesthood. But this altar that he built was not to the gods of the all the Chaldees, but to the God that appeared to him. So he wanted to trap his fellowship with that God so that his life would be a product of his intercourse with this God that appeared to him and gave him a personal promise. If you go to the New Testament in the book of Acts of the Apostles, 
you will find a scenario. You find a scenario where the Grecian widows began to complain of neglect. And if you are a student of the Bible, you will notice that good religion is to attend to the affairs of widows. Right? These guys, as much as they knew that scripture, they were not willing to attend to widows because they knew by the teaching of Jesus what will shape their lives. Instead, they set up an administration which we call the deacons to take care of these matters. And they themselves will give themselves to the ministry of prayer and the world. When you hear someone say, I'm going to give myself to the ministry of prayer, what he means by that is that my life is going to be shaped by prayer. I will allow prayer to shape me. What I am going to become, I cannot become if I don't allow prayer to shape me and to influence me. So I'm going to give myself to prayer. From the day I gave my life to Christ, I, 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 I found this grace to teach. From the first day I gave my life to Christ, the grace to teach, I when I gave myself to prayer, I now discovered that I'm not called to preach elementary things. If you give me a Sunday school manual to teach about salvation, when we start teaching on salvation, it, it, it becomes... <laughs> well, I didn't find that until I gave myself to prayer. Then I discovered that, no, yes, I have the grace to teach, but it's different. And as I began to travel and to travel in prayer, then it became consolidated. I knew therefore that I was called to herald the kingdom of God. And to educate the people of God on how to navigate under God's government and God's influence. To the end that your life becomes an expression of that which God had in mind. God's vision. I found it. So I'm not shadow boxing. As I allowed prayer to shape me, I became more precise in the handle that God placed on my life. As I continued in prayer, then the prophetic grace now was given. You see, I was faithful in the teaching and God now gave me the prophetic and showed me how to migrate from the teaching office to the prophetic office, which is what I will do in a moment of time. When, when we start, we have not started, we're just, now I'm convinced you're back from the market so we can begin. The lecture number one you must understand that in attending to the altar all altars are powered by the sacrifices that the attendant brings first peter chapter 2 verse 5 first peter chapter 2 verse 5 okay he said, ye also, as lively stones are built up, a spiritual house and holy priesthood. The reason for the priesthood is to offer up spiritual sacrifice. Underline spiritual. Where's my man here? Come. Spiritual sacrifices. As you begin to attend to the altar, exercise your spirit. Exercise your spirit consistently every single day a regime comes a regime opens up in this new regime you start receiving instructions instructions do this those instructions carry the codes for the spiritual sacrifices that god is expecting from you he can tell you can you stand before me for 42 nights spirit the reason for the priesthood is for spiritual sacrifices. You don't know spiritual sacrifice. You will tell. Can you stand before me for 42 nights? Then you'll be watching to see if you will comply. Because what you will be bringing to the altar that will be burning perpetually is your flesh. Your flesh doesn't like obeying instructions. Say, so can you stand before me for 200 nights? That was when I discovered to secure audience with God is, is not a cheap thing. You want to meet God? I'll tell you how.
as you begin to attend to the altar, God will begin to see that, okay, you are developing the discipline. He will leave you in that dry state for a long time. So that if you have any other alternative, go! He will allow you to go. Only people that are foolish enough, beyond, the devil will give you reasons. He will come with mind-bending tricks to tell you that you are wasting. Say how gifted you are. Wasting yourself here. What are you doing? Until you accept that you are a fool for God. Because if you accept it, Satan will become tired and say, okay, this guy's mad. Let's not, we are short of abominations. Let's not waste it on mad guys. So when you have defeated Satan by your ability to endure, that God will come and begin to give you instructions. The instructions carry the tone of the spiritual sacrifices that God needs from you. It is your priesthood starts, not that initial time that you were praying consistently. No, that's not your priesthood. That is um, pre priesthood. It starts when you are given instructions for spiritual sacrifices and you begin to obey them. It means that your application has been accepted in heaven. Working with God will cost you. You know, our generation came up with a doctrine. They <laughs> say, Jesus did everything. You don't need to do anything. It means you are greater than Catherine Kuhlman that said, it costs me everything. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know Christianity. What you are doing, you are. It's the form fair. Your Lord will appear on that altar and he will begin to give you instructions. That was how he said, Stand before me until I tell you to go. I thought, I thought it would be for, for two months. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then he said, You know, comes and I can see you are praying. Say, what do you mean by that? I've been here since January. That was when I, I was not taught. God has a schedule, a timetable of visitation for every man. He will not come to you a second before that time. No, he will not. And if you get, if you get tired and you leave, you leave dry, as if you never met. You might even leave and form a doctor and say, he's not real. You will do that. He will still do what he wants to do in your generation without you. I saw that he is a king and that you don't send him around. He will only come not because you prayed. He will come because he wants to come. He's a king. It's not, it's not like the demons of Africa that the, the witch doctors can send on errand. God is unsendable. I waited for him. I waited for him. It was 200 and 65, 64 days. Then he sent me four angels. Ooh. If I begin to sing, those four angels will come. Yeah. Have you ever followed an instruction? If you have not, it means the rebellion of man from the fall is still in your soul. You don't understand government and that's why you will not know power. Have you, have you been brought before a dead corpse? And you were asked to raise the dead. That guy that is dead doesn't have faith. I am a woman, honey. You must be in touch with that which cannot die to raise the dead. Christianity dies because we have abandoned the altar. Embracing the altar means that you have accepted that you have a king. Salvation was not God's original purpose because he was not planning for you to fall. And that's why in the Garden of Eden, there is no silver. Check. Because silver talks about redemption. If you check the periodic table of Apostle Paul in the New Testament, he, he added silver to gold and precious stones. There was no silver in Eden because there was no need for redemption. So the goal of redemption is not redemption. The goal of redemption is to bring us back into kingdom participation. Because man is a rogue without a king. You will never know your king until you have what? Uh. Two 
264 days. Then he sends me four angels. The first thing they do is that they paralyze me. Only my neck could move. And I discovered that I lost all sense of time. So I said, Jesus, where are you? I have been arrested. <laughs> I have been arrested. Where are you? Then he didn't answer. I said, okay. If you are the one, this heat I'm feeling on my leg, let it move to my head. Then the heat went. I said, ah. You know I'm a mass teacher. The probability that this is you, I calculated it, I told him. <laughs> so <laughs> this, is a, this is a slim probability. Can you move this heat to my stomach? Then he moved it. I calculated the probability. I said, You see, you know, you know, this is. I asked him some other things. He did those things. I said, No, I'm sorry. You know, this probability, no, it's not that I don't, I, that I doubt. Oh, that was when my eyes were open. Then I began to see the empty. They were like, you know, those old Coke bottles that are twisted and as glass twisted and light, a light, fluorescent light bulb radiated. Never seen a terrible, it was terrible. And I couldn't run because they paralyzed me. If not, that's a good time to take out. <laughs> the thing you are calling is terrible. You don't, you don't know. Hmm, it's terrible. When they released me from the prison, I realized I've been there from 4 p.m. in the evening to 3 a.m. in the morning. I went to work. I was still confused. I came back again. came back to my room because I normally come to the room, remove my tie, remove my suit, then I run to the mountain to pray. I came back again. I entered into the room, removed my tie, removed my suit, and I was there again. They, they came back. Ooh. The angels have used the embassy. Now they have come into my realm. Oh, that's when I started hearing the songs that angels sing. You see, the door is already open, but I'm waiting for one angel to come. First, so that I can prove to you that what I'm saying is not a lie. I know you don't believe, and that's very good. Those days when I go to church, I just will be praising God and I, do, and I do like this. To lift my hand up, a curtain opens and I begin to see visions for hours. That's how the prophetic opened in my life. That's how I became a seer. I could see into the realm of the spirit. If you are lying to me, I'm seeing lie on your tongue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My mother is the one that raised us. Taught us the, the Bible. She saw me preaching. She said, no, this is not my son. Because I was born in Stamina. I could not speak. So, from whence has he gotten these words? Oh, I was preaching, preaching, saw a man uh, lost his sight and I cried and his eyes. Oh, my mother said, no, that's not, that's not my fault. Two days, my mom could not talk to me. She was in perplexity that is this my boy? You know, it's not her boy. That one is no longer her boy. That one has been sold out to an altar. Mm. Let her never think. This is her son. He receives commands from another quarter. Oh. Oh. I can sit on my seat. And I'm in a choir. The, the choir is singing. And I'm just there. Just shaking my head like this. You don't know that I am alone, but I'm not lonely. Oh. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> so one has come. See a lake, a momala, a saila, oh, Miss Sala. Two hundred and sixty five days. Unfortunately for me, unfortunately for me, I was not taught. I left those that angelic encounter, I've carried it till today. That's how the, my miracle ministry began. Signs, wonders, miracles, mighty things began to take place. Things that could not be explained. Things that were strange to understand. They began to take place. And I ran with that anointing for five years. Until I sat down one day 
to think of that prayer I did for 264 days. I asked myself, what was I looking for? So I was looking for God. Was it God I met? It was just his angels. Nobody told me. Nobody told me that if God wants to come, the first thing he does is that he sends angels ahead of him. Oh, you don't know that? The earth is the lost and the fullness thereof. The world and there that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the floors and established it upon the seas. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. That has not lifted his soul to vanity nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Lift up your heads. O ye gates. And be thou lifted up ye everlasting doors and... The king of glory will come. You see, there, there were heralds that were sent at the end of the king of glory to clear the road before he will come. So those heralds that, that were sent to me, I embraced them as the, the end of all reality. And I wasted five years doing miracles. Oh, I repented and I went back. And I was determined to either die or see Jesus face to face. That was the first time he came to my room. His presence remained for three days. He gave me an instruction that I should focus on the youth of Nigeria. From that point, I rose up for 12 years, jumping from campus to campus, preaching the kingdom of God, preaching the power of God. You know, an apostle must have an encounter, not just a vision, an encounter with Jesus. It is Jesus that will send you. That's what apostolos means, a sent one from Jesus. His authority comes by Jesus. For 12 years, I was hopping from campus to campus. I went around Nigeria six times. Many people say I was a fool because the guys I was preaching to did not have money to give me. So I'm paying for my tickets, flight tickets, paying for all of that, hopping from place to place. People were getting saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, delivered. I was doing everywhere, everywhere because Jesus spoke to me. He said that if I'm faithful, preaching to the youth that he himself will come and open the gates of nations to me. That's what Jesus told me. On the 19th of August, 2019, I was preaching in a city and when I was ushered into my hotel room, Jesus came. I've come to set you free so that where I am, there also will my servant be. I said, you never spoke to me in parables before the meaning of this sometimes God will speak you think you know what he's saying I had to pray for one year before I cracked that riddle what he meant by that was that I should resign my job because it is time for him to take me to the nations as he promised and I cannot go to the nations and still hold on to the job meanwhile in the natural I was about to become a manager oh my again I told my family members, they knew I was a zealot, that the way I followed Jesus was like a, a madman. So nobody wanted to say, don't resign. They say, follow the will of God. That's what they told me. So I resigned. <laughs> Two weeks after I resigned, they said, we will increase the anointing on your life. So I leave my life from that altar. As you begin to attend to the altar by spiritual sacrifices, that he will prescribe to you, then he becomes the supervising spirit on the altar. Because when you begin to attend to an altar, the spirit of the altar will come to you. It begins to supervise your life. I say, that man cannot be your friend. All of these spiritual realities, you are having them because you have a living When last did you follow a prescription? A sinner man will stop sinning when he begins to pray. A praying man will stop sinning and a sinning man will stop praying. Key to your victory is in your altar. Ah. Ah. That was when I knew the voice of Jesus. when I knew his voice. 
many politicians will come to me and say, am I going to win the election? So if I pray about it and it's negative, I don't really respond. Because a politician doesn't want you to tell him that he will not win. It's a serious case for you to tell him, save your money. Not, the Lord has not chosen me. Hey! No need to say that, just go. Because I knew his voice. I knew what it means to take his message to, to nations, to take his message to kings, to men and to women. For to this end were you born, and unto this end were you raised, that you will proclaim light in the midst of darkness. You will be contradicted. I'm telling you my own story. You see, many people will fight against you, but they will not succeed against you. He told me beforehand that my destiny was heavily laden with peril and fights, conflicts. So I prepared, guided the heart, the, my, the lungs of my mind. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Just before you become weak, as you go before his, the altar, he kindles the flame again. Say, Arise. It's not time to weep. Stand upon your feet and make proclamations. I know him. He's alive. He's alive. And you will know that he's alive when you begin to raise your altar before him. He comes in full blown manifestation to give you instructions and to order your life. If you can forget the person sitting by your side completely and you focus on God the next few minutes and then you begin to pray. Forget about it. Then let's begin to pray. When we do that, we'll attract his presence. And when his presence comes, I will let you know. I will stop the prayer and tell you why his presence has come. Then he will, I will pray to him. He will command angels to go and, oh, shh. It's already here. It's already here. If you are in this place and you were building an altar and maybe you became discouraged and abandoned that altar, can you repent now? Can you repent and say, Lord, I am sorry. I never knew that this was the way, the example of the patriarchs. Men that navigated with you, men that walk with you, you can repent before his presence. You can repent before him. You can repent before him. There is one in our midst that was supposed to be mighty, mighty in the spirit. I see you with a blue robe, a blue robe in the spirit. And you were supposed to be a prophetic intercessor, someone that will pray and see the things that you are praying. Yeah, so God is activating things, He's activating them. I can't hear you pray. You are not praying. You are not praying. You are not praying. You are not praying. Forget about your neighbor. It's time to travel. Siko brama na ha si so se na yo Esko pre ka bisgo sa sa la habraha te pre Isa monde he is ka pre mi na kudi a ti ko pondo Oko sa la i ko pre Yata te ko ska balabe Ante so pre he is ko so 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 mo As ka pala ko ho se he sa ka baite Isko pre he is ko sa si la Zika braha ba ka te Esko be bo bo si ko sa minaite Isko bende his kabi Isko se salite Eko patu la habe kasanto Isko brebe de ketelia Isko babadura Aikambe la tosketa brisko babalate Eko bres kontemina kandelia His hand is becoming stronger Holy Ghost Holy Ghost From the crown of the head to the soles of the feet From the crown of the head to the soles of the feet Let the anointing rest up Samine <laughs> Ibro conto cose sa sala hamber ke tu skendele Ibro mos isa sile isko sa sala tande isko brena hantelia isko braba kute kande aprisko pama where is your altar where is your altar where is your altar where is your altar Ani na mama Jesus na mama 
Ibro kose kapatua iskobre. La hasum brehezka yeto barakante. Ibra masketo briga batendo heze salatua. Abrakatana busa menakadia presko paranda. Amante koria brasketa barakante subinakandelia. Emons abrakatuze sasi. Rabando sketo kobera manatalia. Ibra maka yata kosketa miso salabrande. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. 